I think that with ADHD, there's it's kind of a misnomer in some sense because um, it implies that there is a deficit in attention. And I think it's um, very easy to think when it's because it's labeled that way that that kids with ADHD lack attention. And in fact, that's really not what we see at all. We do see more of that trouble with regulating their attention um, also to non-preferred activities or things that are just not as novel or engaging and don't provide those same kind of dopamine hits. Um, and so that kids with ADHD might be great at those Legos or preferred interest video games, things that really um, press on that dopamine lever a bit and also are just inherently engaging to them. But when it comes to things that are more tedious, more boring or things that are just not of high interest, it does become a lot harder for them to focus and pay attention. There are three different types of ADHD. And um, what we know with ADHD is that there's two distinct um, symptom dimensions. So there's the inattentive piece and the hyperactive impulsive piece. And so within ADHD, under that umbrella, there are three subtypes. So there is the ADHD inattentive subtype, which is what we used to call ADD. Um, there's the ADHD hyperactive and impulsive subtype. Um, and finally, there is the combination of both, which is the ADHD combined presentation. Um, and there's actually um, a fourth potential presentation uh, called sluggish cognitive tempo, um, which seems to be a syndrome that um, is similar to ADHD inattentive type, but a little bit different. And what we tend to see in these kids and adults is it involves more of slow processing of information, um, a lot of excessive daydreaminess, um, poor retrieval um, when it comes to information from memory, and also more difficulty staying alert, especially in situations that are a little more tedious or not as novel or engaging. A lot of kids um, early on in preschool, the ones that are noticed are the ones that are having difficulty controlling their bodies, um, staying in their seat, following the classroom rules and things like that. Um, and then as kids develop and some parts of the brain mature that are also responsible for controlling those impulses and kind of like bringing down the restlessness and hyperactivity levels, those parts of the brain come online, but we still see some of that residual difficulty with paying attention, concentrating, filtering out distractions um, that still persists into school age years and into adolescence a bit more. Whereas, you know, in boys, we see more of that hyperactivity and impulsivity. And in girls, we see more of those inattentive symptoms mm -hmm. um, and some of the more, um, I guess, organization and planning difficulties because of those executive functioning challenges. Thinking about the ADHD inattentive type, and again, this was the one that we kind of thought more of um, as we used to call it ADD or think of it as that ADD type, we often see difficulties with paying attention, um, frequent daydreaminess, um, being able to concentrate for extended period of times can be challenging, organizing tasks and um, activities, completing things in an efficient and effective manner. Um, when we think about our hyperactive and impulsive subtype, we see more of those difficulties sitting still. They're very restless. Um, they, there's often the phrase, they act as if they're driven by a motor. Um, and so it's really difficult for them to downregulate those impulses and control their bodies. Um, they're also, they can be verbally impulsive at times, meaning that they might interrupt when another person's speaking, or they might blurt things out in class because it's like the first thought that enters their mind they need to share with others. And it's hard for them to kind of put that filter in place. And then with the ADHD combined presentation, it really is um, six or more symptoms in each of those two domains. So if we're seeing a lot of the inattention and trouble concentrating and paying attention to those details, plus the hyperactivity and the impulsivity, those are some of the things that we see in the combined type.
think as the field of ADHD research continues, we're seeing that um, it really is characterized more as a self-regulation disorder. Um, as Joel Nigg, who's a great researcher um, at the University of Oregon calls it. And it really is true. Like we see these kids not only have trouble regulating um, their concentration and attention and planning and organization skills, but the emotional and behavior dysregulation that comes along with ADHD and those symptoms seems to be pretty consistent across the board. Um, and along those lines, we do see a lot of kids with ADHD struggle with those other executive functioning skills. So being able to think flexibly, step back and see the big picture in a situation, shift their attention or their, um, their focus from one thing to the next, um, realizing how their behavior can come off to others, filtering out their distractions, um, planning and using forethought to think ahead of a situation to generate effective strategies. So those are the other pieces that I think um, we see really cut across the condition mm -hmm. that also are definitely worthy of attention too.